The Creality UW02 Wash and Cure Station. Let's give it a review. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys. I've reviewed Wash and Cure Stations for Eligu, Anycubic and Frozen. So when Creality asked me to review their UW02, I was happy to take a look. This is a large and attractive dual purpose machine capable of washing prints up to 10 inches tall and curing ones a couple of inches taller. My guess is that it's intended to work alongside Creality's Halo Mage and Halo Mage Pro. But of course it can be used with other brand printers. The base is wide and sits firmly on rubberized feet with no slip and slide. There's no mechanical parts on show, so we can surmise that everything is magnetically driven. The turntable is metal, which is unusual, and it slots into place more simply and effortlessly than any I've seen before. This is the way turntables should be fitted. This is the way. The light array consists of 24 ultraviolet LEDs, and I was impressed to see these sealed behind a screen, something I don't think I've seen before. I assumed this was to keep the electrics watertight, which is actually a pretty worrying thought, if this really is the first time that I've seen it. But I think the Creality website is suggesting that this also intensifies the light, but it's not overly clear, so don't quote me on that. There's a protective coating on the turntable, which, when removed, reveals a reflective surface to help bounce UV rays vertically. I will say at this point, I'll probably be covering my lid with reflective surfaces to really help light uniformity. This is not meant to be a criticism of Creality, as all curing stations seem to be the same, which is a pity. After all, if this, or this is able to reflect UVs for better coverage, then it would be great if Creality and again all manufacturers either coated their lids in places or gave us reflective adhesive strips so we can do this ourselves. Creality also supplied this rubber band to go around the turntable, possibly to protect the user from any potential sharp edges on the metal surface, not that I've noticed any but more so to prevent items from falling off. When we look at the controls, we can get a clue why this may be. What we can see are two modes, wash and cure, with the default being wash. We can also see two speeds, normal and quick, with the default on quick. And we'll come back to that in a moment. There's also a time selection feature and you can select between 2, 5, 10, 15, 20 and 30 minutes, which certainly covers all the bases as far as I'm concerned. And of course, there's a play and pause button. All of these buttons are nice, clear and responsive. The wash tank comes with a clip-on sealable lid. Inside, there are two removable frames. The first is a standard basket, but actually, it's not so standard. Not only is this reasonably long, but it's probably the widest that I've seen, which is something I actually welcome, as I know I've struggled with narrower baskets. There's also a second attachable frame, designed to hold build plates if you want to wash with the prints attached. Here are the measurements of this platform if you want to measure your build plate for fit. At the bottom of this wash tank sits a simple impeller, but unusually it's in a sort of well. If we look at the basket again, we can see that it's got a flat bottom and no legs, which reminds me of an old girlfriend. And if we look at the underside of the tank, this well becomes obvious. Now I think this is actually a pretty clever and well thought out idea. The tank is again the biggest I've seen, with a capacious capacity of 9.6 litres. However, 
if we remove the turntable and slide the tank onto the base, where it homes nicely thanks to these fixing points, when just one liter of IPA or ethanol in my case is poured inside, the bottom of the basket is fully submerged and any prints would already be at least partially covered. And all because of this clever well. In fact, with just four liters, the basket itself is virtually covered. One of the things no one ever tells you about with wash stations is that the bearings in these impellers inevitably get clogged and jam. How long this takes depends on many things like the choices of the resin, the cleanliness of the solution, etc. But even so, it's great to see the Coriality have actually included a spare bearing in their packaging. That's sensible forward thinking. So let's give it a try. I was already doing one print on the Uniformation GK2, an experiment in printing Cuban link chains, which you may have seen on my Instagram or Facebook pages. But specifically for this review, I printed a mini Volgaman. I deliberately started on normal speed and once again I was impressed. One of the main drawbacks of most wash stations is that they can be too powerful and damage fine prints by bouncing them around in a violent vortex. This normal speed gently passes cleaning solution over the print. Switching to quick on the move is possible and this is more what we typically see from most washers. And if you're a fan of the Vortex, we can see here, without the prints, that this certainly isn't lacking here. Midway through the wash cycle, the impeller stops and reverses direction, helping maximize the cleaning effect. One thing I forgot to mention, and again, this is the first time I've seen this, the wash cycle will not begin until the lid is in place. I'm used to seeing this with curing, but not with washing. And that's a sensible idea, as this prevents splashing and, of course, wafting around nasty fumes. With the items removed and drip dried for a few minutes, the wash tank is removed and the turntable replaced. Using just our mini Vogman with the normal speed selected, the turntable is off to a juddery start though this does quickly smooth out. If anything, I'd actually say this is probably a little too fast, as some prints may not be as stable as this one. And yet, we can speed things up even further. Right now, Mini Vogman thinks he's training to be an astronaut. I guess this is why Creality gave us the rubber ring, and I can't help but think, quite frankly, that really, this speed business shouldn't actually apply to the curing cycle at all. And maybe it's just laziness that it's not been fixed. But still, Mini Vogman survived. There are no underside LEDs, which other curing stations do incorporate, so that means manual rotation of the prints is a must. However, the UW02 does its job. It thoroughly cleans and cures, just like it should. When it comes to purchasing one of these units, I am a little confused. I can't find anything in stock on Amazon right now, but it's clear that it's the same model that I have here. Yet, if I look at the Creality website, it's the same model and specs, but it now appears to have three speeds rather than the two I have on this model. Now, it's not unusual for YouTubers to be given prototypes, and in this case, old stock. So my guess is that this out of stock model has now been surpassed by the three speed. Obviously, I can't comment on these speeds, but if I was a gambling man, and I'm willing to bet that I'm not, my guess, again, would be that the slow speed is slower than the one that I've demonstrated. 
So what do I think of the Creality UW02 Wash and Cure Station? Overall, I've been pleasantly surprised. There are quite a few firsts here for me, like a wider basket, the impeller well, a delightful fit and remove turntable, LED covers, speed options, and lid protection. And these are worthy of recognition, as for me, these set this wash and cure system above others that I've featured on this channel. However, I'm obviously confused why Creality would send me an old two-speed model when three speeds now seems to be the norm. And what the new stock turning up on Amazon will be, I really can't be certain. But I will say this. I really hope that the default setting of the curing has been set to the lowest possible speed, rather than the fastest. But other than that, it's a very nice piece of kit. Check the description for price links, and I'll update them as soon as information becomes available. In the meantime guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Take care, and thanks for watching.